I hope you're doing fantastic. Today, I want to talk about the biggest pitfall that I've seen almost all of the IT firms fall for when it comes to selling their services. And I'm also going to talk about how they can overcome it as well as how they can secure more clients, but also how they can attract more prospect and leads. So this is pretty much today's business model for most IT firms, if not all IT firms really. They follow the model of the large companies, but they cannot win at their own game. So if you're a small or boutique firm, you cannot win at the business model and Accenture or a large firm like that is running the business off of. So typically what they do is they do what I call label arbitrage. It's really because they charge for their time or the time of their consultant. So it could be hourly rate, daily rate, per diem, Right. I know it applies to travels, but depending on the circumstance, it could be that or retainer or whatever way they want the packages that they want to label it. To me, it's just the short charging for a time, essentially. The larger firm, they have often, they have intellectual property. So essentially they have their own framework, their own, their own model, and they definitely have brand recognition. So as opposed to smaller firm today, they also want to do liberal arbitrage, but here's the challenge. If they're lucky, they get leftover talent. So the talent that could make it to the larger firm, they essentially come here. And that's one of the reasons why they struggle to attract talent. Even if they're able to attract talent, they, they struggle to retain that talent. And one of the, the ways I like to look at it today, as far as the business model here is because you're doing liberal arbitrage, because you're relying on team's capacity, on billable hours, are you able to handle 10 new clients or even five new clients tomorrow? So if you have five new clients looking at your doors tomorrow, can you handle them? And from my experience, the answer is no, because they can't afford to have a bench and they can't afford to go to the marketplace for a specific skill set that they're looking for that they are about to sell in time to deal for. So essentially what they're left with as far as strategies to win is either go cheaper, reduce their rate, which is never a good solution. You don't want to be coming to dies, but that's sometimes what happens. Or they look for referral because they know that that's the best way for them to find new clients and without you know, competing at a high level, if you will. They go niche, which is good. So instead of uh, competing in a market that saturated, they basically look and say, okay, this is where we find success and let's dive in deeper. And obviously uh, in order to secure the client, those clients, they look for similar projects to implement, which means that if you solve a specific problem and implement a specific solution, you look for another client and say, hey, I've done it here, you know, your typical case study way of selling. But the challenge here is if you look at on the left side here is that most seem to forget the real reasons why clients are buying your services irrespective of the size of the project. I don't care if it's a enterprise worldwide SAP implementation or if it's a local custom feature on a website. I don't really care. It doesn't even matter of, of the spectrum. The reason why the client or your prospect looking to purchase your services is because they want to escape a situation and they want to arrive to a situation. So I'll show you quickly uh, what it's all about. So they have a problem and they want to solve that problem because they want address a new opportunity or they want to jump into a new situation. So escape and arrival, that's pretty much what it is. And your service, your services, your solution is the gap, which we allow them to go from their current situation that they don't desire to the ideal situation, the dream situation where they want to get to. Your job is to prove to them that you can do it on time, on budget and at the highest quality. So. These are the three areas, if you will, that you need to uh, overcome in order for the client to work with you. First of all, they have to know that you exist. They have to like what you do and they have to trust that you're the best in the world or at least in their world to to do that, to accomplish it. How do I know that they only care about their transformation is because from my own experience, who pays for those transformation or for that project or for that solution is always a business thing. That's why there's a business case, even going as far as saying that irrespective to how it is positioned, the IT team, the technology team that you most likely work with has to go back to the business team, either to prove funding or to prove result. It doesn't matter if it's a deep tech solution, it always reports back to the business problem that they want to solve, right? So, and to me, at least from my experience, every single time there was a project, it always needed business approval from a financial standpoint 
and from a business case, business value standpoint, essentially. So here's an example of one of the projects that I was working on. From a business standpoint, the, the bank wanted to escape a situation where every single offer or most of the offers that were presented to the client, their end client or so, uh, the bank, uh, the account of the, the, the holder of the, the bank account, offers were irrelevant to the end client and therefore they were losing revenue opportunity. They wanted to get to a, a situation where every single offer that was made to the client was relevant to the client and they wanted to increase their revenue because the end client opt into the offer, I sign up and pay and it will make give them more revenue to the bank. So our solution here was essentially closing the gap between where they were and where they wanted to be. The reason why I'm focusing on this is let's always keep top of mind that yes, we are deep into technology, but we have a business problem we're looking to solve. And that's really what the client is buying. It's just buying to travel from one situation to the next. And then here, what we did just quickly here in terms of feature is our new solution here was identifying the right opportunity, creating the offer and sending it to the end customer to the right channel. So if you know that this customer, for example, uh, spends a lot of time on email, we send it to the email. If you know that they respond well to mobile application notification, we do it that way. If they're better through a call, we send it through a call center to reach out to them. So that just gives you an idea, hopefully, of about the value that the, the solution provide at the business level. Now, the real question here is how can IT firms show and prove that they are the best to take the prospect to their desired outcome faster, highest, with the highest level of quality and with a fixed price. This is really why productizing your services is perfect. And just quickly, what is a productized service? And I took it from Greg Hickman, I believe, as far as a simple definition. So shout out to him and his team. A productized service is a defined niche, a defined problem, defined outcome, defined delivery timeline, and defined price. So this is great for the client first and foremost, because they are confident in your ability. So there's no surprises. They know exactly what problem you solution solves. They know exactly the outcome what they're going to get. They know how long it's going to take for them to experience the outcome and they know how much they're going to pay. Versus today, you basically tell them, I'm going to charge you for X amount of engineers, X amount of BA, X amount of maybe testers, X amount of consultants, uh, and we think it'll take X amount of time. That does not give them the confidence that they need in order to be able to solve their problem. Obviously, this does not apply to all, each and every solution. There's specific situations where this applies. I'm just going to give you an example here. If it's your first time you ever uh, solved a problem, prototype solution obviously would not be the best run, right? But if you solve this problem one, two, or three times or more times, then you're clear on the problem that you solve, you're clear on the, the outcome, you're clear on the timeline, and you can define the price. This allows for you to create or to productize a service for a specific solution. So there are obviously a few criteria, but instead of redoing custom solutions every single time, or instead of selling trading time or your team's capacity for a solution, this is where this comes to play. This is beautiful also because the client is confident because you've done it a couple of times before they didn't know exactly what to expect and you also are confident because your solution is proven your margin is over 70 percent you're looking at over 70 percent net margin which is amazing and beautiful because you already you're productizing the solution you don't have to worry about team's capacity you sure earn your sales cycles by more than I want to say 50 to 75 percent based on the uh the situation because typically what happens is your clients when they come to you because at this stage they come into you when they come to you they already know what to expect it's just a matter of configurations sometimes or maybe it's, it's a perfect plug and play a quick note here where i completely disagree with most of the marketplace is around terminology so a lot of businesses will basically call their services productized but in reality it's not productized they essentially packaging their time what i'm saying by that is you have businesses out there or firms out there who say hey pay me 35 grand you get access to A, B, C, D. But the problem that I noticed that it doesn't solve is the solution and the outcome. Let me give you an example in a different vertical. So if I want a design firm to come and build my brand, for example, I know that I have a brand, but I, I don't know exactly what it is going to be, right? I know that I have, I'm paying for a team or UX, UI, maybe graphic designer, maybe motion folks. That's what I'm paying for, but I, I'm not paying for a specific outcome. That's I, at least from a, a, a solutions 
standpoint, that's the gap where I see. That's why I see a big difference between productizing your service versus packaging it. Productizing your service, you know exactly, your clients know exactly what they're going to get, where they're going to land or arrive. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to hear your comment, your feedback in the section below this video. If there's anything you want me to clarify, I'd be happy to do so. Let's talk in a conversation. And if you want to grow your IT firm, with unconventional tips and advices and strategies, feel free to click on the notification bell and subscribe as well, of course. Until next time, take care.